Welcome, friends of the written word, to my monthly wrap-up video. Today was a good grading month for me, uh, probably because I had my anatomy exam and it stressed me out a lot. Whenever I get stressed out, I have to take these relaxation breaks when I grab a book and I just read <laughs> until I feel a little bit better. Let's see how stressed I was this month. This is how stressed I was. I started May by reading Hair to the Empire by Timothy Zahn, first book in the Thrawn trilogy, and uh, this is a Star Wars book, like the title suggests. It has the cheesiest cover ever, but this was so good! It's incredible! This is probably the book I enjoyed the most this month. It's ridiculous, I loved this. It was so fantastic, but it's only gonna make you happy if you're a Star Wars fan. I got invested to such a high degree in the story that by the end of the book, I had like tachycardia because of it. I was so engrossed and I wanted to know how it ended and I was always on the edge of wherever I was reading. As soon as I have time, I'm gonna make a review for this, so look forward to that. It's coming sooner or later. And I'm not sure, maybe I should do like a review for the whole trilogy all together, but yeah, who knows. Once I'd finished Star Wars, I saw a haul by Katie over at Fusions of Wit, and she was hauling uh, Dark Eden by Chris Beckett and other great books, as she usually does. And um, so we agreed on a buddy read, but I had to wait for a while to get this book in my hand. And while I was waiting, I read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I have a whole review video up for this, so I'm gonna link it and you can check it out if you want to. Especially if you're interested in knowing uh, why I didn't love this book. This did have its perks though, like the dialogue was good, and uh, the main character was super relatable, and even though I didn't love it, I bubbled it up in like two days, after which uh, Dark Eden by Chris Beckett came in the mail. As I mentioned before, I buddy read this with Katie at Infusions of Wit, but I also read it with Lisa over at My Book World 2. They're such great people. Uh, I did a full review of this, so that's gonna be linked. I really enjoyed this book. Uh, I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. It had so many pros to it, but also a few cons. I especially enjoyed the way that everything that happens in it makes me think about Earth and society, how it is structured, what are the drives of human nature and whether we can or cannot suppress them and control them. Since I didn't find Fangirl amazing, I thought I would be done with the whole Rainbow Rowell business and get attachments out of the way. I was expecting another okay read when I got into this, but I was so wrong. This is so much better than Fangirl. As I read, I just fell in love with the characters, with the pacing, with the format in which the story was sold. Everything in this pleased me so much. It was such a heartwarming story, and I liked that the character, the main character, Lincoln, uh, a 28, I think, year old man, um, develops throughout. It was so nice to witness because you really get attached. You know what I did there? It was lame, but I did it. If you're looking for a light read that isn't overly fluffy, then give this a try. I really recommend it. The last book I actually finished in May is Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Hoare. And let's take a minute to appreciate my stunning edition. I hate the one with the stone. It tells us about a 20-year-old uh, Jewish US citizen who decides to go back to the Ukraine to thank uh, the people who probably saved his grandfather from the Nazis during the Second World War. It also tells us about a young Ukrainian man who happens to become the guide of this um, protagonist as he searches. And finally, it tells us about uh, the ancestors of uh, the protagonist called Jonathan Saffron Poor. I didn't like to get to know the ancestors of our main character. I thought that most of the characters in these background stories were 
silly, it made no sense, they were stupid. On the other hand, I loved the letters that we get throughout the book written by the young Ukrainian man. I loved that his English improved throughout the book as he wrote more and more letters. I also loved that he became increasingly honest with himself, uh, with the person he was writing the letters to, and uh, how his life improved from that. He gained courage and he changed. It was so nice. I just liked those so much. And they were funny. And finally, this is what I am currently reading. Letter to a Child Never Born by Oriana Fallaci, who was an Italian journalist. It's the story of this working woman who one night suddenly realizes that she's pregnant and she starts this conversation with her unborn child. I want to read you something that's written on the first page of this book because that's what inspired me to read it. To those who are not afraid of doubt, to those who ask the wise without ever getting tired and at the cost of suffering and death. To those who are faced with the dilemma of giving life or taking it away, this book is dedicated from one woman to all women. This is written so beautifully. I enjoy Oriana Halachi's prose incredibly. The first line is just stunning and piercing. Tonight I knew you were there. A drop of life escaped from nothingness. I'm getting the feeling this is something that I would recommend to any woman, but I'm gonna have to wait to finish this before I do that. That was all from the month of May bookwise. I told you what my favorite book of the month was. What was yours? Tell me in the comments. Thank you for watching, have a great beginning of summer and a nice month of June. Goodbye.